You're Jessica Fletcher, the famous murder mystery writer who always asks the same annoying question. You mean, has there been a murder? No. <laughs> Simply amazing. You've created a transcendent, three-dimensional character that would make Angela Lansbury purple with professional jealousy. How did you... How did you worm your way into the female psyche and make this transformation so compelling? Well, um... I, uh, put on a wig and dressed like a chick. You dressed like a chick? Oh, my God. I feel as though I've, I've been given the key to one of the most luminous acting techniques of our time. I just farted. No. Genius. Now, you, you performed in this sketch with Alfred Molina, who was nominated three times for the prestigious Tony Award. Did you choose to work with him based on his mastery of the Stanislavski method? No, no, he, he was the only one we knew who could fit into the co costume. Brilliant. Now, Craig, there are thespians, and then there are thespians. And believe me, I've seen all kinds of thespians. <laughs> What's funny? Thespian sounds like lesbian. Groundbreaking. Now, Craig, d tell me, what was the most rewarding part of donning the persona of the esteemed Angela Lansbury? Well, I like wearing big fake boobies. They're fun to touch. <laughs> just, I, I've just been struck with the most incredible revelation. Craig Ferguson is an idiot savon, only without the savon part. Well, I don't speak French, but thanks. <clears throat> Are you as turned on as I am? Yes. Kiss me, you damn fool. It's just looking sarcastic now. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, I'm a little distracted. I still taste a little bit of liptony on my... Mmm. Mmm. His beard is like wine. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody, yes, it is. It is. I, uh, did you see, did you see uh, the president's speech earlier on tonight? It, we're live, of course, so I just watched it. And, uh, <laughs> I, really, it was great. See when he said that thing about that and then promised to solve that problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm lying. <laughs> anyway, never mind the president's speech because there's a man in Bulgaria who's having a sex change operation so he can look more like Lady Gaga. <laughs> That's true. He wants to look like Lady Gaga, and I'm like, if you want to look like Lady Gaga, keep the penis. <laughs> but... Break me off a piece of that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're a Tiger Woods. I'm like, Craig, Craig, you're not doing a Tiger Woods joke. I'm not. It's just information. <laughs> 
Hey, look, it's my job, right? Shut up. Uh, so, Tiger Woods has just bought an apartment in Manhattan, and I'm thinking, yes, good idea. What a better place to practice golf and escape the temptations of single life like the beautiful <laughs> Isle of Manhattan, known, known for its golf courses and its... and its good old home cooking. <laughs> But it's, although that's good for New York City, it's, there's some other stuff in New York that's not so good. The, the authorities say in New York is facing an infestation of disgusting, impossible to kill pests. <laughs> that's right, the Jersey Shore cast is in town. <laughs> no, the, no it's, it's things that are even more frightening than Snooky after three vodka teenies. They've got. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking about bed bugs. They've got bed bugs all over New York. It's a b big problem. We've got uh, bed bugs. Have we got a clip of them? You got a bed bugs? Show us the clip of it. I'm like, that's only frightening because of the music. It's just, a, it's just a bug on a bed. It's like, oh, no, a bug on a bed. It's like, it's a bug. You see that with different music, it wouldn't be frightening. If you could d put different music on it, I bet it's not so frightening. <laughs> Adorable! <laughs> anyway, over the weekend, millions of bed bugs were found inside the Empire State Building. And I'm like, that is one step too far, bed bugs. <laughs> I mean, sure, I'll look the other way when you infest other American icons like Trump's wig and Hasselhoff's chest hair, but when you go. <laughs> But when you go to the Empire State Building, you've got two fuck. <laughs> so I, I was acting. It's because James Lipton was here. I thought I'd act a bit. <laughs> you've gone too far. <laughs> well, you can't go. You can't infest the Empire State Building with bed bugs. That's where Tom Hanks met Meg Ryan at the end of Sleepless in Seattle. That movie would have been ruined if there was bed bugs everywhere. <laughs> All those bites would make Meg Ryan's face look all weird and puffy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, see ya. Too soon. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the bed bugs can live to up to a year without feeding? They're like supermodels. <laughs> And trust me, there is nothing creepier than finding a bug in your bed. Sometimes I look under my covers and I see half of a cockroach. <laughs> the first half. <laughs> it's enormous. <laughs> and it's frightening, no matter what the music! <laughs> I made myself laugh again. <laughs> anyway, the new bed bugs is what I'm saying is the new bed bugs are crafty. They don't need mattresses to hide in. All they need is a dark environment with filthy cushions. <laughs> this is true. They've been found in, in, in jails and in nightclubs and in Bill Clinton's office. That is true. <laughs> no, that is true. They were, they, I'm not making it up. In Bill Clinton's office in New York, it was infested with bed bugs. <laughs> I got bitten a lot down there. <laughs> then I got bed bugs. <laughs> anyway. La <laughs> Do it once I was in New York after I was doing my Clinton impersonation impression a lot and a, a construction worker yelled at me, hey Ferguson! I went, yes. He went, nice Clinton. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> anyway, last month in New York, the CBS building in New York was infested with uh, uh, bed bugs. The exterminators figured out where they were. They were in Andy Rooney's eyebrows, but they were there. <laughs> What's the deal with bed bugs? The majority of bed bugs, of course, are found in mattresses, which makes me wonder why don't they make a mattress which is resistant to bed bugs? Then again, I'm still like, why don't they make a mattress out of donuts? So, uh, <laughs> so you, well, that'd be awesome. You could hungry in the middle of the night, turn over. <laughs> I'd go through a mattress a week. 
<laughs> but once bed bugs get in your house, they're almost impossible to get rid of. It's like having Regis Philbin over for dinner. <laughs> And bed bugs aren't new. They've actually plagued mankind for plagued. Yes, plagued. <laughs> Craig, what does that mean? Is it like plagued? Similar. <laughs> they have plagued mankind for centuries. In olden times, bed bug bed bugs were known as. <laughs> Look, I went on Google today. I'm getting a if, I, if it kills me. They, in olden times, the uh, the bed bugs were known as uh, wall lice, uh, red coats, and crimson ramblers. <laughs> By the way, Crimson Ramblers was the name of a Marxist folk group I once belonged to. <laughs> <laughs> Religion is the opium of the masses. Hoodly do do dee 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 do. It's commercials time. Weird. How ironic that the commercials would come up just as I mentioned Marxism. <laughs> How about that, Jeff? Oopsie. Oopsie. We'll be right back. song I used to play with the Crimson Ramblers. <laughs> it's a little number we used to call the House of Un-American Activities Committee. <laughs> Money. I know you're like, Craig, what are you doing with money? Getting ready. <laughs> Do you know the, uh, the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, uh, there's the nursery rhyme. Sleep tight, don't, it's not really a nursery rhyme, it's just that little thing you say to somebody before they go to bed. Sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. But now you'll have to really mean it. <laughs> don't be afraid, sleep with a can of raid. <laughs> <laughs> Were you now or at any time a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> what time is it, Jeffrey Peterson? Time to chuckle along with the tweet mails. <laughs> That where you were clapping along, and then that was the bit at the end of the jingle, and everybody went. <laughs> and then you gave yourself a round of applause for clapping along to a piece of pre recorded music. <laughs> you guys wouldn't have lasted five minutes in the Crimson Ramblers. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. We got, uh, we got tweets and emails that have got to be answered. This is from Lucy in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, <laughs> Lucy says, what's a polite way to get off a phone conversation with someone you don't want to talk with? Just say, oh, I've got diarrhea! Craig, Mel Gibson, line two. Yes? No. Yes? No. What are you doing? <laughs> Skeletons improvising. <laughs> I love that. All right. Um, this is from uh, Emma in Malvern in Eng England. <laughs> I say, Lord Percy, could you help me with my tea? Yes, please. <laughs> All purpose kind of English thing there. Thanks, everybody. All right. This is from uh, Emma in Malvern in England. She says, I have to choose whether to buy some new boots or actually go to live at... Oh, right. <laughs> I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'm nervous. James Lipton was here. He was kissing me. Uh, 
Uh, she says, I have to choose whether to buy some new boots or actually afford to live at university. <laughs> what do you suggest? Well, I always think for a young woman, what you really need is awesome boots. <laughs> Many people would say to you, probably your father and mother and relatives, you need an education. And I'm thinking, mm, not if you live in L.A. <laughs> in L.A., what you need is great boots. <laughs> You're welcome, parents. Um, There's an email from Hannah in San Francisco. Hannah's one of those names where you don't know if it's a man or a woman. Actually, that's not true. But San Francisco is one of those towns. <laughs> anyway, Hannah says, hello, Craig, I am 10. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hannah. All right, well, first of all, uh, you're kind of a little young to be watching this show. <laughs> Hannah uh, says, hello, Craig, I am 10 and I have been saving up my money. What should I buy? You want to save your money for about another eight years and get yourself a pair of boots. There you are. <laughs> You're welcome, parents. <laughs> All right, uh, this is uh, from Sean in Park Forest in Illinois. You know, I was going to change my name to Park Forest <laughs> when I was in the Crimson Ramblers. <laughs> I was going to be the Crimson Ramblers featuring Park Forest. <laughs> And then I was exiled to Switzerland. <laughs> Sean says, uh, Dear Craig, do you have any ideas for my fantasy football team name? <laughs> Crimson Ramblers! <laughs> this is from Kim in Turnersville in New Jersey. Um, who says, Dear Craig, my mom is totally crazy for cereal. Ha! <laughs> it must be crazy in your house. <laughs> Where's the pot? What did they call cereal? Give me the cereal. Uh, yeah. That was me being your mom there. <laughs> anyway, my mom is totally crazy for cereal. How can, but by cereal, do you mean crack? <laughs> My mom is totally crazy for cereal. How can I stop her from eating all of my good cereal? <laughs> uh, you wanna, you wanna lock it away there. Uh, lock away your good cereal. What's my favorite cereal? What cereal advertises on CBS? Probably all of them during the day. Yeah, uh, which is stupid. You should advertise your cereal at night. That's when people are stoned. <laughs> They're like, stop pretending you're selling cereal to moms who are watching. <laughs> Daytime dramas or whatever the hell you're calling soaps. Don't do that. Advertise the cereal at night. Guys would be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Count Chocula. <laughs> I'm going out to buy some now. <laughs> we have to take a break, but when we come back, it'll still be Tootsie Fruitsie. <laughs> we'll be right back. I was trying to hear myself think over the phony applause, and I was thinking... <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, are we human? <laughs> or are we dancers? <laughs> and then I thought, you can be both, you know. <laughs> Take that, killers. <laughs> Band I really like and now won't ever be on this show. <laughs> Hey, my next guest is uh, in a, a new film. He's a big star. He's in a new film, Machete, which is, uh, which is in theatres on Friday. Take a look at this. Don Johnson, how the hell are you? 
I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. You look good. You look awesome. I, well, I know. I, uh, 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 I'm breathing, and that's yeah. a good thing. And you're Don Johnson. <laughs> and that helps. That's a, that, you, do you take your sunglasses off in that movie? Because at first I'm thinking... One time. That's it? One time, yeah. All right. Yeah. Do you, you play the uh, reasonable guy with a, a reasoned argument about immigration? <laughs> I don't, there isn't a rational uh, opinion about immigration that I've heard in this country yet. Yeah, yeah. people get upset about it, yeah. especially when they found out I came in. <laughs> That's what confused everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You no, know, actually, the movie isn't about immigration. It's, it's not? No, 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 it's, it, it, uh, Robert kind of uses Robert it. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, Robert good. Rodriguez uses it as kind of a red herring. So it's sort of, kind of, sort of about it, but it's not really about it because he kind of floats it out there, and then we make it about everything else. Right. <laughs> Look, let me, just, of, let me just ask you. Yeah, 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 let me, let me ask you another way. Does uh, stuff get blown up in this movie? Couple of things. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, girls in bikinis? Uh, and girls without bikinis. Okay! You got a movie right no, there. No, no, no. We got a movie. You, you learn in the first five minutes that you're in for a hell of a ride when right. uh, um, a cell phone comes out of a place that normally you don't find it. Pity for my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not him. No, no, I, <laughs> he wouldn't know what to, he doesn't have the, uh, well, never mind that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a, a cell phone comes out somewhere, is it ringing? Uh, no, but uh, someone makes a call on it. That's all I'm going to say. Right, That's all, all I'm going right, to say. We're yeah. only going to get in trouble if we go here. There's no, no, we, we, we're you're already say, in trouble when you run this show. There's going to be uh, ooh la la and all kinds of stuff. No, I see. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Well, that's how we deal with it here. Do you, you're not a cusser in your own life, though. Do you cuss? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> Do you cuss? No. <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> All right, I believe you. <laughs> and you don't even get the $2. Uh, I kept some money because I thought I would bribe guests if I had a difficult uh, uh, interview with them. I could maybe just bribe them. You know, does this refresh you? I think it'll work, but yeah. go to hundreds. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't have that kind of budget. <laughs> Look at this place. We got a skeleton and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, what's happening here? Well, basically what happens is that CBS, round about 12.37, when this show goes on, decides, ah, what's the la -la. point? And then I said... <laughs> and, they, and they had to go to bed. <laughs> and, then, and that's what I come on. <laughs> that's perfect. It's, that, that's it plays perfect. right into my ballywick, Dawn. That's what I do. <laughs> Which explains why they couldn't give you a live second guy. No, no, that's, that's it. But he's... he's Awesome, as long as is, if he's within eight foot of an outlet, he's very witty. <laughs> yeah, now, what have you been up to uh, then, apart from doing this movie? Where are you living now? Uh, I, I'm here. I live here. What, here? Yeah. Well, <laughs> in, in the hood. You right, know. right, right, right. Yeah. West Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would make the news. I <laughs> No, 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 I, I, uh, I, I passed through Chris Hollywood and, um... Didn't we all in the 80s? You bet. <laughs> I knew I knew uh, you were that's somewhere. That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, does this refresh your memory? <laughs> that's it, yeah. that's it. That was you. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about the whisker burn. No, that's <laughs> all right. That's all right. I still walk funny, though. <laughs> Don't tell everything, you know. Now, well, you, so you, you live... Well, where did you... Did you, you didn't grow up here, though, did No, you? no, I grew up in Missouri. Ah, mm -hmm. I like saying Missouri, because if I, if I was in a movie, I could say, I'm out of Missouri. Like that, you know. <laughs> did you ever say that in a movie? No, and I, if I did, I wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> well, why not? It sounds a little bit... <laughs> well, it... West Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little... Yeah, yeah well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. Right. <laughs> Ever been back to Miami since I... Uh, since you know, old, uh... I, I don't go back much anymore. Why it's, not? um... Well, you know, we kind of did that town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did that town and pretty much everything in it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was. These were big times. Yeah. I mean, I I remember the show, but really, I can't for the life of me. I can remember it, but not remember it. If you know what I mean. I uh... I feel the same way. Right, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. I feel the same way. And then it... Nash Bridges. Where was that? That was uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. Great town. Yeah. What I remember of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's different now. You you look all kind of like trim and cleaned up and. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Sobered up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of thing. Uh, Look I, at you I, all smelling like a regular guy. I know. <laughs> I know. Fooling him again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like San Francisco. Though. I think it's a love. Do you ever watch the um, the MythBusters there in San Francisco? Um, I don't. I, I haven't watched them. I, I've sort of scanned by them. You you do something with them though, right? No, like, I've had them on the show because I enjoy the. I like the Discovery Channel. I like the different. Uh, I did yeah, the Shark Week thing there. I, the I'm all about the Discovery Channel, the Science Channel. If it has anything to do with uh, you know the the universe and and uh, and uh, nebulas and galaxies. Nebulas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Whoa. Somebody went to college. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That, that was like West Hollywood. I passed yeah, through. Yeah, passed through it. Yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, what do you, you what, did you watch Morgan Freeman's History of the Universe thing? That was uh, that was interesting. Well, you kind of listen to Morgan yeah, Freeman's uh, true, History yeah. of the Universe. I mean, it, it, it's incredibly interesting. My it bores the pants off my wife, who's uh, which is good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, look. Method There's a book me just for the <laughs> joke. Thank you. There you go. Right, that was I, good. I, I, I figured out the key to this show. Yeah. Take the money when take, it's on the take table. Take the money yeah. when it's on All the right, table. Don't it, leave the money it, on the it. table. How My long wife, you been in this business? Uh, <laughs> before yeah. dirt. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've been, uh, I made my first film in 1969 for MGM. That's when they um, still, that's when there was still a studio there, you know, and a back lot. In fact, I was talking to someone the other day. I was here when Century City didn't exist. Really? Yeah, it was a back lot for, for 20th Century Fox. And that's why it's called Century City? Yeah. It's nearly all crack dens, no? <laughs> <laughs> It's no, it's not. I look forward to your letters. Oh, I'm the mayor of Century City. Uh, it's full of attorneys. It's, kind it's, of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're out of time, Don. No, it's, come it's on. It's ridiculous. I know. It seems That's crazy too to me. short. We were just getting started. I know, I know. And I was starting to reminisce about our time in West Hollywood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, look, here's the deal. Uh, you live in town. Yeah, I do. Well, well why don't you just do, like, hang out here a bit? Come I'll by. come over. Come by every, every now and again. I'm gonna do it. Do, I, you should. I will. I'll James just... Lipton sometimes come here. I made out with him. I... <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm jealous yeah, right, now. There I, you go. I, I won't take any two time in there. No, no sir. No. You mean you were <laughs> seeing James. James Lipton as well? <laughs> <laughs> he gets around. What yeah, can I tell yeah. you? Yeah, he's something of a tramp, actually, dude. <laughs> I've noticed that. Just any old actor will do. Oh, any old actor. There he goes. <laughs> Mm. Sorry, I was off there. Uh, <laughs> you gotta go. Uh, listen, uh, good luck with the Machete movie. It looks very, very Thanks good. Thanks so much. Uh, it's a great ride. You're yeah, no, I love Robert's movie, so I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Well, it's all about Robert Rodriguez. It's good. And Don Johnson, everybody. <laughs> Don Johnson. Yeah. I can hear you, I can hear you saying, what is Craig doing? What's that weird-looking phone he has? <laughs> it's not a phone, and yet I'm reading it. <laughs> it's what we used to call back in the old country a bo'ok. <laughs> in the before times, they read bo'oks. <laughs> This bo'ok was written by Laura Lippman, who may or may not be my next guest, but... <laughs> I always feel bad because when authors are on the show, they don't get clips. So, you know, because you can get a clip of a movie, but you can't get a clip of a book, unless I read you a little clip, which I'm going to do. Are you ready? <laughs> she chewed her cookie with the usual care. Oh, see, I got it wrong. <laughs> I'll do it again. She chewed her cookie with unusual care. Probably not, she said. <laughs> well, I'll be buying this. <laughs> Please welcome the author of I'd Know You Anywhere, Laura Lipman, everybody. You 
you look really sassy, you. like you've got it going on. I don't get to get out very much, so it's like a big deal for me to put on a dress and leave the house, because I'm fantastic. in my pajamas most of the time writing. Really? Yeah. I like that naughty librarian thing. <laughs> like the I like that. Tell me about this one, because I haven't read it yet. Um, I, I don't know what we're going to talk about. No, it's a book about a woman who is the only living victim of a man who killed all the other girls that he raped and kidnapped. And one day, 23 years after this happened, he writes her a letter from death row saying he'd like to talk to her before he's executed. It's comedy then? Yeah. <laughs> All the way. Yeah, yeah, no. It, it's, uh, it's you do write very well, but it gets quite grisly sometimes, isn't it? Well, it gets dark. Um, <clears> the <throat> violence is off the page, um, but yeah, it's very dark. It's yeah. very disturbed. And Are you a dark, disturbed person? <laughs> you know, I actually am. There was actually an official personality test that I took where I got this really Shut high. Up. Oh, really? <laughs> Really? Yeah, I was um, I was embroiled in this thing at work, and they were actually... Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, slow down. What's that, then? You were embroiled in this thing at work. You know, sexual harassment thing, or what? No, no. I was basically charging my bosses at the time with trying to make me crazy. And so they sent me to their own psychologist to determine whether there was any truth in what I was saying about their treatment was making me a little bit nervous. Can I do this with CBS? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They gave me the Minnesota multi-phase. I've taken that. Okay. Six hundred questions. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yeah, yes, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, got, I, I did it in rehab. Right. Okay. I did. Do you remember where? You, did you have any abnormal scores? Yes, I did. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look at me. No. I was fine, completely <laughs> normal. Get out, they said. What are you doing in rehab? No. Um, I was off the charts in a category they call sociopathy. What's and, that? and uh, well, it's they said we don't want you to be disturbed by this because a real sociopath would have a lower score than you do. Right. And we just think that. But if you were a real sociopath, you wouldn't be bothered no matter what the result was. Right. You? You'd you be like, yeah. oh, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you would and you would be better at lying on the test. But they said we're not sure why your score is so high, but we think it's all going into the books. We hope it's all going into the books. And, <laughs> and soon wow. after that, I, I left the Baltimore Sun, you know, yeah. in a mutually agreeable circumstances. But yeah, I was, I was, I, I think there is really dark stuff and it does go into the books. And as a result, I mean, you've talked to a lot of crime writers and they're yeah. all pretty cheerful people because it's no, all going in the, no? No, they're not. So no? They're, 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 well, they're kind of weirdly cheerful people. <laughs> They're kind of like, they're, they're a little bit like Undertaker weird. You know, like when you, when you meet an Undertaker, you think, oh, they must be very kind of, hello, I'm an Undertaker. And they're like, hey, how you doing? I'm an Undertaker. Do, 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 do. Crime writers are a little bit like that. You go, um, he thinks you're protest too much. You know what I mean? It's like... You, it's a bit, yeah, you've, they have very dark views of human nature. Yeah, and well, you got to yeah. write, you know, the kind of thing. You, I'm really interested in this now. It's going to be really... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> do you know, on that test... When I got the, the thing, I was going into rehab and I thought, I mustn't, I mustn't end up in a mental hospital. I mustn't, I mustn't. I, I mean, I was in a mental hospital. It was just an expensive one, but I didn't realize that at the time. <laughs> so I thought, they were giving me the test. And I knew there was a question on the test where it says, do you hear voices? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I thought, I mustn't tell them that I hear voices. I, don't, I didn't hear voices, but I thought, well, the voices said, don't let them know that you hear. <laughs> Well, I, I thought I mustn't tell them I hear voices because that, that terrified me, the idea of hearing voices. I, I was scared and I thought I mustn't tell them I hear voices. So, and I knew this question was coming. And, so, and when it said, do you hear voices? And I, I could have sworn I take no, right? And at the end of the test, the guy came back and says, you ticked here that you hear voices. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't hear voices. And he, he didn't believe me. Uh, and, and neither did the voices. <laughs> the voices like, I, was, like... I was very frightened uh, until I realized that people that give these kind of tests, in my experience, I've been sober for a long time now, that they are kind of guessing as much as I am, I think. I don't get the test at all. I mean, yeah. I, I mean I'm mean, i sure there's some science behind it. I, I didn't yeah. try to game it, but the way I remember it is you'd have a series of very normal true-false statements. Right. I, if I were a painter, I would paint wildflowers. Right. If I were a reporter, I'd write about sports. The voices in my head tell me to set fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Just rolling along and, and it's like, yeah, diddly dee, diddly diddly, ah, oh, diddly dee. Dee. <laughs> so, do you think then, if you didn't write the books, that you would be some kind of deranged serial killer, or? Uh... I think I might make some really bad. I don't. Think
think I'd be a deranged serial killer. I think I might do something criminal. I think I might have bad urges that would get out if I didn't write the books. I have bad urges. And? <laughs> and? I don't write enough books, clearly. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting to me. I wonder then, hmm. So if I wrote more books, I probably wouldn't have to do this show. <laughs> This show helps you channel the bad urges? It actually does. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. before this show, I used to run up to people in the street and go, How's the movie? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys get along? <laughs> I heard you just bought a house. <laughs> so where are you now? Are you in Baltimore? I'm living in Baltimore and now part-time in New Orleans because my husband's work has taken us down there. Oh, for yes, on the, on the show there. Yeah, Treme. The, yeah, yeah. Do you, like the, uh, do you like New Orleans? I love New Orleans. New Orleans has made me realize that I'm actually a deeply unfun person. I thought I was kind of fun. Then I moved to New they Orleans. They know how to have a good time yeah, there. Yeah, I'm an amateur next to them. And they, they have almost too much fun. It like sort of unleashes this inner workaholic in me. And I like, you know, I drive past and everyone's at cafes at 11 in the morning already drinking. And I, like, I know they're, I, they're so oh, impressed to me I, I I'm very I really I, I do love New Orleans myself because I I really think had I been there I might not have gotten sober <laughs> I just be like well, what, everybody else is fine it's a tough city I yeah. mean it's a tough city if you have certain predilections yeah bad urges bad urges <laughs> So have you become a hopeless drunk since you've been down there now? No, I'm very hopeful drunk. A hopeful <laughs> drunk. <laughs> One day it's all going to be fine. <laughs> it's lovely to see you again. I'm fascinated by the, by the idea of this book now, actually, and especially when you were talking about the bad urges. Um, I am a fan of your writing, uh, and so it's very nice to see you again, especially with the naughty librarian thing you got going on. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very good. I like that thing you do at the back of the book as well with your oh, chain. Yeah, yeah, the, the typical author pose. That's good. Hey. I write. <laughs> I write. Laura Lippman, everybody. If you're watching Craig at home, you're missing half the fun. Consider this your formal invitation to laugh live in our studio audience at a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Please give us a call at 323-570-0059 or visit our website at oneiota.com. What did we learn on the show tonight, Craig? You didn't see nothing. <laughs> I have to do that because uh, people get mad when they see that the cartoon, the drawing, the photograph of the mouse is shot by the photograph of a cat. <laughs> And people write in in their emails in a very sensible way when I think about it and, and say, You killed a mouse! And I'm like, You're insane. <laughs> but I'll do the usual disclaimer every time we show that little mouse cat thing. Um, that's not a real mouse. Um, that's actually not a real cat, not a real gun. I'm not really on television. <laughs> And these are not the droids you are looking for. <laughs> <laughs>